two, three, four years ago. I'm joined now and I'm delighted to be joined by Green Party politician and former leader of the Green Party, Natalie Bennett. You're on Talk Drive. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jeremy, and I'm joining you right from the floor of COP. So if you hear a bit of noise and people walking behind me, that's why I apologise for any interruptions in advance. Not at all. Delighted, delighted that you could join us. And and maybe you would see my my opening as somewhat cynical, but I don't mean it to be cynical. Suddenly, Boris Johnson's all about long-term promises and solutions. And I have one question for you. Why hasn't he been talking about this before? Is this about short-term popularity or does he genuinely suddenly care? Well, I think I can't look inside Boris Johnson's head. What I do know is that the UK did take on a huge responsibility in choosing to become the chair of the COP26 climate talks. There's a lot of talk about um, this being the world's last chance, and that's what we've been hearing from this morning. Uh, people like the Prime Minister of Barbados saying the world has to try much harder. Uh, indigenous activists from Samoa, from Brazil, pointing out just how much their lives very much their lives are at risk. So Britain does have a huge responsibility. Um, Boris Johnson, of course, is a man who likes a bit of rolling rhetoric, likes a bit of uh, jumping on the nearest bandwagon. I I'm not really concerned about what Boris Johnson thinks. What I want to see is a good result out of COP, Britain being a good chair of COP. You know, Alex Sharma carries a huge responsibility. Um, but it's also worth saying, and I'm going to agree with Boris Johnson on this, not something I say very often, that at the end of these two weeks, or a bit more than two weeks, because it almost never finishes on the Friday, um, uh, we're not going to have got anything like what we need to do. The activists who are out today saying we need 1.5 degrees to stay alive, we have to stop fossil fuel investments. We're not going to get everything we need, but we regard this as a process. And it's really clear with you know, a million people having signed the open letter to the political leaders, there's determination among the public to see things happening. And I think that's clearly what's pushing Boris Johnson. Um, help me out here. Treat me as an idiot. And I, and I want you to, actually, because as the, as the former leader of the Green Party, you would know full well what is needed, what has to be done. I think there'd be a lot of people watching and listening to this show, and I'd include myself in that, that's been aware of, you know, the... The, the arguments for climate change and responsibility needs to be taken. But suddenly it's been ramped up. Suddenly it's at the forefront of everything. Two questions. Why now? Why now is suddenly everybody talking about it? And what needs to be done from, from an expert yourself, Natalie? Well, to start off with the why now, uh, the fact is we have a carbon budget a limit of the amount of carbon that we can emit that will keep us below that 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels of warming. And if you go back to 2015 in Paris, people thought then 1.5 degrees as a target was kind of a bit of a nice sop to the island nations, you know, make sure the Maldives and Vanuatu don't disappear. But what we've actually learned in the time since is how desperately we all need to keep below that 1.5. And there's a window. And what we have to do in the next 10 years is absolutely slash our emissions. How much of that budget we have left means we have to cut our emissions year by year, uh, around about the same amount as we cut emissions in 2020 when we everything locked down for COVID. So that's a really big, massive change in our societies. And it has to happen now. Because once we skid over that 1.5, if we do, um, then there's lots of things that run away. There's negative feedback mechanisms that make things worse and worse. So we really have to act now. Uh, and that's why you know, this has suddenly leapt to the point. I've been to several previous COPs and I haven't seen a tenth of the media and the media attention that I'm seeing from this one. So you must be pleased that Boris Johnson has picked up the baton, to be fair. Pleased? I mean, the great challenge uh, from my point of view as a politician there, there in the House of Lords is going to be to make sure that we keep the focus, you know, COP isn't just for two weeks, COP is for the entire future. So it can't just be the focus for this week or this two weeks. Um, and what we're Britain's doing now, you know, is not nearly enough. And indeed it's too much of anything. things. So we have to abandon new road building, which only generates more roads. The idea that we can even be thinking about talking about airport expansion and indeed, you know, the hashtag stop Cambo, uh, new fossil fuel exploration and development, all of these things, you know, we have to change direction. And the thing is, you know, the people listening now thinking about, oh gosh, you know, their bills, worried about the price of fuel. It's reliance on fossil fuels that makes our life financially as well as, as environmentally unsustainable. If we move is to this, energy, is this as I said, conservation, everyone having a warm, comfortable, affordable to heat home, that's the change we need. 
Natalie, I know the signal's not great, and I'm so grateful for you being on. Um, I, I want to ask you something without you taking this the wrong way. And I used myself at the beginning of this as an example. Do you think the public actually care? Do you think that awareness is now where you want it to be? Do you think cynical people, not cynical people like me, but people who would just have been aware of this but weren't really sort of, it wasn't at the forefront of my mind. Do you see a seismic change now? Do you think that people are now thinking, geez, if we're going to leave any planet for our children and our great grandchildren or whatever it is, we need to do it now. As you heard Charles saying, and Boris Johnson, it's not about our kids, it's about our kids' kids. Well, I think it is right about now. And I think the practical reality is that the climate, whether it's fires in Australia or uh, the US, whether it's floods across Europe or indeed floods in the UK, um, people are seeing that this is about 1.1 degrees warming. Um, exponential growth is something we've sadly all learned a great deal about with COVID. The impacts of the climate emergency, each 0.1 degree of, is an exponential increase in the impacts. So we're not just talking about our children and our grandchildren, although we're certainly many people are thinking about that. We're thinking about right here and now and the need to change in the next 10 years. And yes, I think the public views has entirely changed on that. The surveys back me up on that. But actually what we're seeing is, for example, we had a climate assembly in the UK and there was a similar one in France. And they called for stronger action than we're seeing from politicians, stronger action than we're seeing from businesses. So really what we're seeing is the people are in front, businesses are chasing behind to catch up with uh, where the people are, and the governments are trading behind a very poor thought. Very interesting. One thing, this just in on text, cutting emissions and using less gas guzzlers is one thing, Natalie, but is there a way to actually improve the situation, like planting more trees with carbon, ca carbon capture, for example? If you can answer that, you're a better person than me. Well, what the, the buzz phrase of this is what's known as nature-based solutions. Uh, and this is... Um, the idea that if you plant trees, indeed, if you look after grasslands um, and indeed uh, seagrass, for example, I, I Green Party conference last week, we were hearing about how seagrass meadows are absolutely crucial to storing carbon. We can restore those. All of those things are important. But what's crucial is we don't say, oh, well, we do those things and that means we can keep uh, using up fossil fuel. Uh, it's very much the reverse case. We have to store all those carbon in those natural environments, which also, of course, deals with the fact that we have a huge collapse in biodiversity, in nature. Um, we're facing the sixth great extinction of so many species being lost. We need to do that. And we have to cut the fossil fuel, the other carbon emissions as well. It's not an either or situation. Listen, Natalie Bennett, Green Party politician, former leader.